Hits and Crits. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of On Target, another one where we uh, have the honor to uh, take a look at a new unit reveal. And as always, as we have unit reveals, we have uh, Randall with us, right? So, Randall, great to have you again on this On Target episode. Thanks, Chris. Great to be here. And it's always exciting talking about new units, always bring some kind of fresh yeah. energy to the game. So, happy to be here. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And I, 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 I bet you're excited because you're totally like locked into Graphians right now. I seen your mm -hmm. uh, great paint jobs, what you did on the on the on the Queensman, on the Kingsman, on the Lightbringers. So pretty, you know, Thanks. really, really exciting. And I loved your video on the on the uh, grim dark, grim dark paint scheme. So definitely check it out if you don't want to have like like like. Uh, uh, vibrant yellow uh, people running mm -hmm. around. Check definitely Randall's video on the grim dark uh, paint scheme mm -hmm. for the Brathians. That really thanks. That's yeah, really good video. I'm yeah, definitely not the the colorful, very bright, colorful <laughs> paint guy. So yeah, yeah, me thanks. neither. I I I I really like it. I really like it. All right, so so Randall, your overall impression and like before we start really digging deeper into the into the unit, what's your overall uh, or your first impression on uh, the unit? Yeah, so you know, just without looking at the stats and the abilities, they're at the end of the day, they're a, a six point cavalry option for both sides of Baratheon and Stannis, especially. I think is really needing a cheaper cavalry option you know they have the the champions of the stag but at eight points they're a huge investment and they're not as tanky as they once were um you know so you don't see them in every list anymore but i think that this new cavalry option really kind of fills some of the gaps and um and helps kind of paper over a little bit of some of the weaknesses the baratheon has so i think i think they can really bring a lot to to the baratheon faction as a whole yeah, yeah. So to totally, to totally my impression too, it solves two major, well, I don't want to say problems, but stuff that is really sometimes what, what, what Baratheons lack sometimes, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so one is movement. And the other one is is damage output, right? So, um, yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, I think we, we are ready to jump in to uh, the Crownland Scouts. Right. So there we are. And uh, as always, we're going to start with the box art, right? And the sculpts. So Randall, I just, you know, I give it right, <laughs> right, right back to you, your impression right. on, on the, on the box art. Yeah. So the box art and the card art, I, I think look pretty cool. I, I do really like the color scheme that they picked for the, on the card art and the, the box art, the kind of red, reddish orange cloak and the green, uh clothing or vice versa however it is on there uh, i think it's kind of a really cool mixture of the stannis and renly side mm -hmm. and um yeah i i don't know I, I might i might paint them that way myself or i think probably realistically if, if i only buy one box of them i'll, I'll probably paint one in the kind of grim dark way that i've done all the yeah. stannis stuff but if i buy two boxes i'll probably make the second one look kind of like that because i think it, it's a pretty cool paint uh paint job yeah yeah, I, I, I too, I, 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 I um, actually talked about the, the last time I talked about a, 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 an artwork was the Stone Crows. And what I, what I, what, what mm -hmm. I didn't like about the Stone Crows were that there was no centerpiece of the artwork. There was no like central figure what you looked at. Mm -hmm. And with this, with this artwork, I really like the, all four units are like visible. It's really like they're, they're it, it, the cool lighting around them and they're really the focus yeah. of attention of the box. So I really like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, apart from the awesome helmet and all that kind of stuff. So, but talking helmet, um, let's take a look at the sculpts, right? So the sculpts, um, I really like it. Um, and I've seen uh, Mickey's video and everyone's left-handed again, an old Simon problem mm -hmm. or not problem, <laughs> but Simon thing to, to, to make everything left-handed. Um, so, I, I really love the sculpts. I love the detail on the shields. I I, uh, I I already mentioned the helmets, and I also really dig those dynamic poses. What I do not mm -hmm. like 
is, or what is a little bit off, is the size of the shields, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what I think. What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, overall, I like the sculpts. I agree. There's, a, I have a little bit of a problem with the shields. It's, it's, you know, it's a really small little niggle that I'm not going to get too obsessed over because overall, I think the sculpts are really great. But the, yeah. I think the shields are a little bit too small. I think they could be maybe 25% bigger or a, a yeah. different size, maybe kind of a rounded shape or, mm. or something, or just have the, the shields all slung over their backs because they look like they're kind of ready to be dismounted, you know, holding the shield and the sword at the same time, they look like they're ready to be dismounted fighting. So I'd yeah. say like sling, sling those shields over or make them a little bit bigger or rounder. But overall, you know, I'm, I'm making really small complaints here because overall I really like the look of the, of the sculpts. I, I even Definitely. like the look of the horses, you know, they're just pretty bare horses with the most, you know, smallest amount of possible armor on them, but they're scouts. So that's the way it should be, you know? So these guys look yeah. like they're riding into battle quickly or doing scouting, but then they're ready to just jump off their horse and engage in, in combat if they need to. So yeah. I, I think they look really cool. Yeah. I think that's, that's supposed to be the, like the, or that's the major reason for, for not having like huge shields because they ride through, right. Mm -hmm. the, the woods or like be between two trees or jumping over hatches and like be ready to dismount yeah. or like, you know, so that that I, I think that's the idea behind the uh, the design mm -hmm. of the of the of the uh, of the unit or the sculpts, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. The four armor and the there's no armor around the horses thing. I mean, we we, we know that from from the sand skirmishers and all that kind of stuff. So they, they let's just keep it at they are really agile and fast and quick, like you know. So that's yeah. why their armor is four. So um, yeah, I get that. So I think we're ready to. Um, I go into uh, the units, how they play out, play out. So, um, yeah, the, the Crownland Scouts. So, you, you said already, six points, a five movement. They have a, a seven four profile on a four plus, four plus uh, armor and six morale. They come with the order mm -hmm. uh, Mark Target and Tactical Reposition. Okay, so that's that's the profile. So we actually have outriders in front of us, exactly the same. The only yep. difference is they uh, they have uh, ambush, or the the crownland scouts <clears throat> have uh, mark target instead of ambush, which right. uh, I feel mark target is at least for me my play style or my experience seems seems to be the better um, uh, order or the better. Uh, ability, right, to have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but basically they are Stark Outriders. Um, and yeah, they're um, a little, a little bit slower Stark Outriders, but I think you're yeah, gonna slower, yeah. get a lot more value out of Mark Target than Ambush. You know, Ambush, you're only gonna get value out of it if you attack something. Yeah, these mm -hmm. guys don't have and to attack flank, anything. Yeah, and, yeah, in the, the flank, flank yeah, rare, right. Yeah. So, yeah, and these guys aren't don't have to attack anything all game to get a to get value out of Mark Target every single round. So I think Mark Target is definitely worth trading for Ambush and one additional speed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's more than a fair trade. Yeah. Yeah, so when I saw the unit first, the first thing I thought about was Renly Side, Rose Knights, Middle Token, Tactical mm -hmm. Repo, push them up, right? That was the first, yeah. my, my, my first thought when I saw it. Uh, and I think this is an obvious, uh, let's say, an obvious synergy for the Brad or for the Randley side, uh, but also for the Santa side. It's a, it's a, it's an obvious Baratheon wide uh, synergy that that uh, should, yeah, should really help the um, uh, the faction in terms of claiming a token where they need to, where they used to be mm -hmm. too slow to cover it in 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 the um, be uh, before your opponent did, right? So um, yeah. That's the thing that's really pretty obvious. Can you think about a, a, another synergy? Yeah, so if we're talking about the Stannis side, I would definitely see these guys benefiting the Lightbringers a whole lot. Um, Lightbringers are a unit that is really good at dueling other archers, as long as you know that those archers have ideally some low morale. Um, but the Relor Lightbringers have good armor, so they generally trade pretty well with other archers. And when you get into that phase of, you know, the end of round one, early round two, where you're trading arrows with the other side, 
um, the ruler lightbringers can do some good work. But if they if the dice don't go their way or the opponent gets to jump on you and double taps your archers, then the lightbringers could really be in trouble. But I think the crownland scouts allow you to pull off a shoot and scoot with your ruler archers, so you can get your archers in you know 10 inches from the enemy archers, shift up two, fire. And then before your opponent is able to fire back and counter fire your archers, you pop tactical reposition and move your light bringers three yeah. inches away so that now they're completely out of reach. So yeah. I think I think the light bringers are gonna benefit hugely from, you know, in the first first couple of rounds of the game when the Crownland Scouts are gonna be kind of still in the vicinity of uh, of those light bringers. So I think that's a, it's a huge win for the Relor Lightbringers on the Stannis side. Yeah, definitely. Like to put them in 14, then push to 12, shoot and push back the, the next round is, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's big, right? That's that's really big. Yeah, um, yeah a, th a third thing I was thinking about was um, the rightful heir uh, commander, Stannis, with yeah. a ta tactical approach. So tactical approach um, is, is obviously a really strong card. So basically it says uh, if you expend any weakened token, you can deal... Um, D3 wounds on top of your attack, and if it's yeah. the Stannis unit, it's always a three. So yeah. pretty, any pretty, condition token, yeah. Any condition token, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, th th this synergy is um, is is also an obvious thing for for the rightful AR side, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Just 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 to have two mark targets in in the list makes it mm -hmm. more way more easy to throw out tokens and make use of tactical um, uh, approach, right? Um, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it makes the tokens a lot stickier because you'll have multiple instances of the of the order out there. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, another thing I, I forgot to mention about the Lightbringers is you can synergize with the uh, with Axel Florent a little bit here, you know, so you drop Axel on mm. on the swords, you Panic, panic him, panic your target with Axel, and then you have you know Mark targeted that unit at the start of your friendly turn, so you you make them vulnerable. Axel makes them panic. You fire, and you're firing now uh, at a panicked and vulnerable unit with your Lightbringers to push through extra wounds. So um, yeah, just another mm. another way that, that the Lightbringers benefit from them. Yeah. Um... Yeah, exactly. Um, the 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 another thing I was thinking about um, wh while we talk in uh, tactical reposition was to double it with uh, Courtney uh, Penrose uh, attachment because mm -hmm. he he also brings tactical reposition and imagine how quick can you be with two tactical repositions um, in your front line. Yep. I mean, he's two points, um, which is a big invest, but. Courtney Penrose um, loyal tactician attachment can be really worth it in uh, let's say um, the the Thorn Watch for example. Mm -hmm. So because because he uh, also allows through Might of the Throne, you can do a melee or a charge action, which uh, is yeah. pretty 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 good for the for the uh, Thorn Watch because they can uh, do a free charge retreat out of it through Swift Strike and regroup. So, um, mm -hmm. which, 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 it, yeah, especially when you play like mid, low, elo, or you have like a non, not, not that experienced player um, with with your units that can really, really help you when they, you know, when they were shut down or whatever, or they, you know, they came into yeah. a, ran a ranged attack and they and they lost a rank or one and a half ranks. They just do, you know. They go to crown. They charge, retreat out of it, and 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 and, and it might be a pretty long retreat too, right? And they mm -hmm. regroup off of it. So that's that's a cool combo. And then it brings two tactical repositions in there, which is um, yeah, which is a great great thing uh, in your list. Yeah, yeah, it offers a lot of free movement for for that army. Having two tactical repositions in there can help you kind of sneak into a flank to get a flank charge or uh, get somebody out of trouble. So yeah, having having two tactical repositions is going to make up an army really slippery, I think. Yeah. So that's a, a pretty cool, pretty cool uh, synergy, I think. Yeah. So um, I know we were talking about another attachment, actually, uh, actually a calf attachment you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, 
Go, yeah, so go for ahead. the only the only Baratheon cavalry attachment is the Dragonstone Noble. And I think it's you know, I, I, attaching the Dragonstone Noble to this Crownland Scout unit makes it a seven point cav unit, but I think it really opens up the options that this cav unit has. Like right now, as it stands, just just the base card, it's a, a really good support unit, but it mm -hmm. lacks a little bit in offensive punch. Yep. Uh, so I think putting putting the Dragonstone Noble in there opens up the option for this unit to be a, a kind of dangerous surprise charger a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, if, if you're playing against an experienced player, they're going to know you have Sentinel and it's not going to be a surprise. But um, putting Sentinel in there can increase the damage that these guys can do. Or conversely, it can allow these guys to just cover a lot more ground in the game or on your on your battlefield. You know, so unit gets attacked and now you can get these guys closer to a unit that maybe needs to get that tactical reposition to get out or move or get into a better position. So putting putting Sentinel in there, it just allows this unit to use the tools that it has to, in a, like a wider area, really. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think it might be worth experimenting with that Dragonstone Noble in there, uh, who admittedly doesn't get a whole lot of play. He doesn't see a lot of play in Stannis list. So yeah. I think maybe this this will maybe breathe a little bit of life into that attachment. Um, so I, I'd like to see what people do with it. Yeah, I think is I I think it's a valid valid option to have. I uh, yeah, as you said, I, I I do not know if it, it will be uh, yeah in any sense be be a meta pick, but um, mm -hmm. but I think like for for um, for casual gaming and like you know just having some fun on the table and just you know just throw units and some dice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I really like the like, like the attachment, and if played right, uh, it can really deal deal some damage and 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 th mm -hmm. like through sentinel you're you you should be able to go to a flank and increase your attack power because i i, I mean in case you're you're even attacking right because a lot yeah. of times i see those guys uh, sitting on tokens and doing the mark target doing the tactical reposition and baby i i, I really like the unit also in stuff like uh, winds of winter for example right when you think about mm -hmm. mission mission uh, cards that that um, say you have to uh, cover yeah, condition tokens. Uh, the objective, the objectives on on your opponent's side, or you have to be in your in in your opponent's deployment zone or stuff, right? So this yeah. is something that that Baratheons were really not able to do, but those guys can, especially mm -hmm. with with the attachment you just talked about, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the Crownland Scouts. Uh, I think I think there's not way more to say than I really like the reveal. I really like that they bring this to Baratheons. I do not think that it's like a revolution to, to, to the faction, mm -hmm. but I still think um, it opens up cool opportunities we just showed, especially on the Stennis side. You're now able to have um, like a seven activation list with heavy infantry, some kind of support like uh, the, the, the Faithful, for example. Um, you have a ranged unit with with the light bringers, and you have a calf unit, and a pretty strong NCU setup. So this yeah. is now that they are now able to do it. Like before, they were only able to to use the Dragonstone Noble as the fourth um, uh, uh, combat unit on the field, which um, mm -hmm. feels a little weird, I think, um, or it's it, it it it's just not the same to have like. One solo compared to a whole calf unit is just different. So now yeah. the option is there, and I really like that. Yeah, I like uh, I like the list building options that opens up for Stannis. Like you said mm -hmm. before, for cavalry, we really only had the uh, champions of the stag, or if we wanted to bring a neutral cavalry unit, and eight points for a cavalry unit is a lot, and it makes the rest of your rest of your army look a little bit flimsier. You know, like you're probably taking a warden or something. Mm -hmm. So now you can you can really just slot these guys in there where before you would have had a halberd, you would have had a relore faithful. So you can now kind of have your cake and eat it too a little bit. You know, you're going to probably have Kingsmen, you're going to probably have Lightbringers. Yeah. And and then it's really the other two units that are that, that are your options, you know. And before we really just had, you know, faithful and halberd ears probably or uh champions of the stag and then, you know, like wardens or something so now now we just have more options and can make more interesting and hopefully better lists so I, yeah stannis is, is a happy man yeah yeah we actually 
um, since we're talking list building, we talked with um, um, Daniel Larks uh, before, and uh, we, we we talked through two two lists. Uh, so we actually mm -hmm. already talked about um, the the one a little bit. So the, on the Stannis side, um, you already said it. Like the queens or kingsmen, right? In in Stannis, mm -hmm. uh, the Lightbringers with Bronn, which is always great. I mean, uh, I I really see that Bronn, yeah, basically is yeah might be the stronger yeah. attachment over, let's say, the Red Priestess. Uh, if you mm -hmm. do not go for Davos as a healing battery, uh, Bronn might be the better choice um, over, over yeah, the Yeah, because you always have a free attack, pretty much. You, every exactly. every round, exactly. you're going to get a free attack off of either the swords or the or the yeah. wealthstone. Yeah, even though I really like the Red Priestess in terms of, like, mm -hmm. yeah, thematically, right? I just like, like yep. it. So, uh, yeah, and the, the third unit would be the, the, the Crownland Scouts, now he, here represented with the, with the Source Rider, since they're not in stats yet. But um, and the fourth unit, Baratheon Halberdiers with Sandor, basically to double down even more on um, token output, right? Yeah. To to have to have a whole field of vulnerable uh, <laughs> um, um, victims that that status yeah. or or other units can kill with a tactical approach, right? So yeah, three uh, out of four of these units are it, throwing out yeah. condition tokens, yeah, on their own, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. So on on the NCU board we have uh, Crescent Axel Florent who also deals a panic out right, yeah, um, and Davos who for for obvious reasons uh, to to make uh, to shut down cards or uh, have the have the rerolls on the charge which might be mm -hmm. or which is always good for for Baratheon since movement right since movement speed and stuff yeah. so um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, that that could be that could be one really really good list in the future when those guys um, hit the shelf. So what what's on what's on um, the Renly side? Um, we 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 put together one one uh, uh, Renly list also. So Randall, maybe you can guide us through this list also. Yeah, so it's got Renly, charismatic heir, and he's in stag knights. And Renly has boldness and courage, so he kind of turns up their dice pool even higher. So, you know, they go now to a eight, seven, six, uh, which is going to be hard hitting until the very end. And embolden increases the morale of everybody around him. So the stag knights are going to be a four plus. Uh, and then you've got rose knights who are naked, but they don't really need a whole ton of support uh, as far as attachments go, especially when you've got the scouts there to help kind of move them along and then really the the scalpel of this list is the thorn watch you got the thorn watch with courtney penrose and you already touched upon courtney penrose earlier in this video but you know he has tactical reposition himself and with might of the throne you can get those those extra juicy charges in now that's that's an eight point unit so that's really your your list is really depending on those thorn watch to do a lot of work uh, and then rounding out the list, you've got the Crownland Scouts to throw out the vulnerable tokens to increase your damage, to help catapult those Rose Knights up the field with tactical reposition. And then on the NCU side, we've got Marjorie Ty Tyrell, who herself also hands out uh, condition tokens, so she can throw out a vulnerable to an engaged enemy and restore one wound. So uh, that kind of feeds into the Rose Knight's deadly bloom. So hopefully you can do some free uh, free wounds that way. And then you've got uh, Elden Estermont for some card draw. And then of course, Lord Varys for even more movement or uh, all the other, the other things he can do for you. Some extra healing or hits. Um, yeah, so it's, I think it's a, it's a fun list. Uh, for me, the coolest part of it is the Thorn watch Courtney Penrose, because you're gonna have you're gonna have the stag knights up there just pounding on things, and then you're gonna have the rose knights just holding the line, and then you're gonna have the crownland scouts kind of zipping around, supporting everybody while the thorn watch, you know, kind of jump in and out of combat. Uh, so I think this is it's a, a list that if you don't know what you're doing with it, you could really be in trouble when you just get the thorn watch crushed really quickly. But I think if you're a, a player who knows how to manage these units well then you could do some really cool things with this list yeah what i really like about the list is that th those it, well it's not hidden hidden 
but um it's it's you know the the, the rose knights with deadly bloom um if you can if you can push them up as we just discussed right they will be in your face really mm -hmm. quickly and you have so yep. many sources to heal them even like passively right so through Varus, mm -hmm. you can do it when your opponent goes to backs marjorie does it right so and then um and also through Elden Estamont, you can draw into those um, uh, uh, Renly cards really quick, which also yeah. enables you to heal. So there are so many sources of healing in the list that you are not really aware of when you start off the game. I'm pretty sure, right? I I I, mm -hmm. I would doubt that 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 everyone out there would is 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 aware of this healing potential this list brings. That mm -hmm. you know that gives me the great joy vibes a little bit. Um, so um yeah i really like that about the list yeah so i think this ends our initial in uh, analysis now like having having this unit revealed for a few days now um so is there any final thing we didn't touch upon i'm sure. i have one note one okay. really quick note mm -hmm. um i will say that i was happy to to see and maybe this is a comment on you know maybe i'm not connected enough to the community or something but i i to me it seemed like this was the first card uh reveal by simon that hadn't been previously spoiled by somebody else that i have seen in a long time so now usually True. before before a unit is uh unit's card is released we see some yeah. kind of grainy motorola razor flip phone picture of it that was taken in like you know, the break room of a Chinese factory or something. Yeah. Something, and yeah, yeah. this was like the first time I remember seeing an actual Facebook post where it revealed the card. So yeah. I was pretty happy to see that. And it, maybe that Simon's getting finally getting ahead of leaks yeah. and stuff. So, um, yeah. And, and, and before, like a month ago, they, they kind of exactly posted a little teaser. You saw that little teaser yes. where they showed like an extreme close up of, yeah, with uh, the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that was that was really cool. I think there it was a good good from like a brand management kind of um, perspective. So that's not related to the stats or the unit really. It's more just like a yeah. kudos to Simon. I thought they did absolutely a good job there. Yeah, I love that too. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. Um, if you like the content, just you know, drop your comments down below. If we forgot anything, if you have this, you know, this super ultra whatever combo we didn't think about or the list we didn't think about, hop on the Discord, discuss it with Randall, myself, uh, Larix, and all the other cool guys from Hits and Crits, you know, just, you know, uh, connect with us. Uh, we're happy to, uh, to, uh, to uh, get your feedback and uh, discuss. Um, yeah, definitely check out uh, Randall's channel and especially, especially this uh, painting tutorial on how to paint Baratheon's Grim Dark. I think this is, this is uh, so, valuable video for the community i really have to tell you um thanks chris yeah so definitely check it out um yeah nothing more to say until we meet again roll those crits come for the hits and stay for the crits